OK, record recording has just started, so I'm going to um, uh, start uh, in the in this lecture and the coming two to three lectures, very long language. And um, in this class, we will uh, start with the basics of uh, Verilog. Uh, uh, Verilog is uh, a hardware description language, which means it's a language that is designed to uh, express and uh, implement uh, hardware uh, designs. That's that's the target. It's not a database. It is not a uh, <clears throat> object oriented lang uh, language. Uh, it is not a scripting language. It is dedicated for hardware design. And obviously uh, there is uh, this flow that people use in the industry where you express your design in Verilog and then you continue the process of design. We will talk about it uh, uh, more uh, throughout the our discussion of uh, the Verilog. When you start your implementation with the behavior, then you go for uh, the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the 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 structural after doing the synthesis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, but uh, Verilog is uh, kind of a companion for hardware design. Now the other competing language is VHDL, but in the industry, Verilog is the uh, uh, pro probably the most commonly used language. This is uh, what I showed you here is a skeleton of uh, the module. The module in Verilog resembles to 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 some extent the class in object-oriented programming. A module is a way for us to describe a component in hardware. And what I am showing you here is the uh, the the important uh, parts of the module. Believe me, it took me probably a day or so to 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 uh, design this slide, not because of so many information, the challenge was really is to remove information because in one slide you want to show the uh, key components of the language. So the key components here, obviously the start of the definition uh, of the module starts with the key module and ends up with the key word end module. And between these two words, you describe the hardware components. We will go in the next few classes over each and every one of these uh, uh, components uh, or sections for the module. OK, but this skeleton we will we will keep flashing at uh, the, the, the every once in a while just to show you that we are here. Now we finish this one. We're going to go here. We we'll finish this one. We are now here. So but this is really the skeleton of a module, which is the basic way of describing a hardware component. OK, all right. Um, now in hardware, um, uh, so the module, as I indicated, is the basic thing that 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 stands out because a hardware component OK, the way we describe it is by using a module, a module uh, 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 in, in, in Verilog. All right, so so you can see that if I want to describe this, right, I will have to have a module that describe it with the inputs, with the outputs, with the functions that are inside. OK, so <clears throat> basically, um, uh, if we if we want to describe uh, this module, the very first thing we do, we define the interface. Let's go back here. You can see this is the very first thing you define, the interface. OK, so what do we mean by the interface? The interface, what we mean are the inputs and the outputs. Let me just uh, use a marker here, maybe. OK, so the, the inputs and the outputs, let me just... Uh, Highlighter probably better. OK, so so this is this is uh, this is input and this is another input and this is the output. 
Okay, so how do we de describe this in, in, in Verilog? So watch the keywords module and in module, which which indicates the end of the module. OK, now this here is the name of the module. My module is a name. It could be anything. It could be my module. Uh, it could be CPU. It could be any name you choose. Then the list of the pins, the input and output pins. And now you have to define have you have to define these pins, which ones are inputs and which ones are outputs. This is how I define the interface. The interface is a key component for the module. OK, all right. And and if we go back here, we can see this is where my interface is. All right. So. <clears throat> so for example, let's take just a, a simple, uh, a simple, a simple um, uh, 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 OR gate here, which I already defined. I have defined the module for it. Now I need to do instantiating of the module. This is a key thing. Once I define a module, I instantiate, meaning I use it. Uh, in in object oriented programming, this is when you create an object out of a class. So here is this is this is uh, uh, an an OR gate here. Okay. So now I want to use it, right? So I call. I, I write this or this is the name of the module. Then I give the instantiation name O1. This is any name I choose to. All right. I can call uh, this X. I can call this uh, my or. But this one here must match. OK, the module name. So, th so this is this must match the module name that I defined it with. Then I have these list of, of signal that I need to connect. Now, obviously, I am connecting to this module. This O1 here, right? It is connected to the output, and A and B are connected to the inputs of the gate. So in this example here, we show how to use a module. Once I created a module like an OR here, how do I use it? OK. Here in this example, we can uh, we have a mix of components. I'm, I'm defining this as my component, so I'm, de I'm defining it uses a module. So this is a module, end of the module. This is the name that I chose to CCT. Now, what are the inputs? A is an input and B is an input. Watch A and B and then C is my output here and I call output C. Then what I do, I describe the connectivity. Now, this is what we refer to as a structure or very log structure or very log, which which you basically you, you, you describe the connectivity of the components. So I have what I have an or gate. I have a not. I have an and gate. These are there or not an and and in between here I show the connectivity. So for example, Look at the uh, look at, for example, at the at the at this OR gate. What are the inputs that are getting into it? A and B. You can see here A and B. What's the output? W0, right? So this is W0 of type wire. And then the NOT here, which is the inverter. It's a keyword NOT. Input is as B, right? And the output is W1. Input is B. W1 added and the output port is the first port. And then you have this uh, AND gate. So AND here has uh, an input of W1, W0, W1, W0, and an output of a C. O1, N1, A1 are those instantiation names, any names I want to give it to them. And by the way, you can emit them if you wanted to in Verilog and it's acceptable. It's usually very good always to give instantiation names for components. OK, now. These components can be instantiated of whichever order I wanted to. I don't have to follow a certain order for instantiating components. In terms of data types, there are two data types that I have in Verilog. So back again, let's go back to the skeleton. OK, so you can see here is my declaration of the variables. All right, and so I have, I can see here there is reg, 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 wire, and integer. Okay, so uh, let's let's make the distinction between reg and a wire. 
a wire represents a physical connection between two points. It does not implement a storage. It doesn't have a storage. While the register does have a storage, it's a variable with a storage. So for example, if I want to implement flip-flops, I should define the variable as a register. Okay, the wires are just used to, for connectivity without any storages. Wire is the default data type. So if you have, like for example, here, we did not define these W1 and W0. So the default will be a wire data type. Now, any wire or a reg, okay, uh, one bit uh, will be, will have one of the following four values as far as Verilog simulation is concerned. Um, it could have a value of a one, a value of a zero. We know that. Then we have these two additional value Z, which means high impedance. <clears throat> these are for the nodes that are floating, which means the node is not connected to ground and it's not connected to power supply. It, it is floating. Typically, this is a very dangerous uh, situation and you don't want to have nodes to be ha to have uh, 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 to, to, to be floating unless in very limited circuits, right, which we allow this, like, for example, the tri-states uh, buffer uh, that was that we studied in um, in DIC. But in, 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 in general, you don't want to have floating nodes. So if any node is not driven, it will be, it, it will have a value of a Z. And then X mean unknown. And typically uh, these X's indicates that you have not initialized your registers and your the inputs of your designs appropriately. And, and in simulations, if you get lots of these X's, it means you have initialization problem for your simulation. Uh, a lot of students, when they start their assignments, they typically get lots of X's, and, and that indicates a initialization problem. And I'll tell them typically, you have to reset the flip-flops. You have to have values on their primary inputs, okay, uh, and stuff like that. So any, any, any wire or register can have one of these values at any time in the simulation. Now, okay, so now let's have, uh, how do I define a constant in, 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 in Verilog? So let's take some examples here. Uh, typically the first digit here, six, eight, four, uh, 16, et cetera, indicates the size, how many, uh, how many uh, binary bits is this value? So six, tick, we call this tick, B, this value. It means I have, th this value is six bits and it is being represented in binary and the value is zero, one, zero, underscore, we ignore it, one, one, one. Here, uh, it says eight, eight bits of this value, zero, one, one, zero, zero. So now notice that here is that uh, I, I, I have just four bits and these are the four bits right here. Okay, so, but, but I'm defining eight here. So what about the rest here? So I extend with zeros here. I add zeros because I'm, I'm saying that this is an eight bit value. So I, I fill up the rest with zeros. And here uh, um, uh, as well, this value here, so we fill with zeros. I use this four and four, and and this example says that I don't I don't sign extend. No, I fill with zeros. Okay. Now this example I have four bits, and and I'm defining the very first two bits, and then I'm saying the upper bits are are x's. So zero one, and then the upper two bits are unknown x's. Sixteen value of hex and these are the hex values so this is b right and then i've got a and then i've got uh, three <clears throat> and then what do i do with the upper bits initialize them to zero because i have how many bits here 
I have 16 bits, so they have to, 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 to fill the rest of the upper bits with zeros. Uh, if I say 24, default is decimal, so this will be 24 in decimal. Now, how many how many bits is this? Uh, uh, this is will be 32 bits because the 24 here it will be considered as integer type, and integer uh, types are considered to be 32 bit uh, of value. Now, this value five bits of octa and 16 bits of hex, but unknown value, so these are unknowns. Eight bits of high impedance these these are high, high impedance this is how i define constants in verilog the size the base binary hex decimal and the value of the number now we have bus notation here which means that suppose in this example that i have a, a four bit adder has an a four bit input and a four bit input and a four bit output it's very inefficient for me to go out, uh, you know, and and name this a zero, a one, and uh, and and they will have lots of variables here. So this is this is not really recommended. What I could do is that I create a bus here of a, and the way to create it is by saying like this: input, right, from three four to, to from three to zero. That means I have a bus of four bits right and uh these these four bits from 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 three so so i have here uh, i will have an a of uh, a, a bit a zero a bit a one right a bit a two right and a bit a three right uh, 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 this is this is this is what this is what it means. And I have to start with the whole just in this simple notation. And also a bit uh, B, both are input, and I have an output here of four bits as well. Okay, so so this is considered to be a bus notation. <clears throat> I can take from a bus here. Uh, certain bits, like for example, I'm taking bit zero here and from A and bit zero from B and I send it to this XOR and I generate C zero. Okay. All right. So as, as I'm doing here in this, in this implementation here, I'm taking input, these two uh, inputs and I'm producing this, this value, this output value, <clears throat> which means I can pull single bits from a bus, right? So, for example, here, if, uh, if I can take the, the third bit from bus B and assign it to a variable, I can take uh, four bits from bus Z and assign it to the first four bits, the least significant four bits of my bus. I can take a bit of a bus and I send it to another bit of another bus. All are legal notations, okay? All are legal notations. Now, in terms of modeling types in Verilog, which means uh, uh, how can I code in Verilog? There are three types. There is the structural, there is the behavioral, and there is the data flow. Behavioral procedural, behavioral data flow. To be honest, um, structural is there, but these last two types, people mix them, right? I myself mix uh, behavioral procedural and data flow. Um, I did not have a great advantage of splitting the two, so I find myself mixing these two, right? Mixing the, but the structural, no, it is used actually for net lists and, and, and not commonly used. People do not code using structural, very little, because this is typically the output of synthesis tool, okay? Right. So let's see, what do we mean by structural? Structural is instantiation of gates. OK. So this is I have this gate, gate, gate. So I'm instantiating these gate to create a design where I have these three inputs, A, B, C, and these two outputs. I have an internal node here, which I defined as a wire. So now this is my module, right? Simple circuit. This is the name I name it with inputs A, B, C, A, B, C, input A, B, C, and output X, Y, output X, Y x and y 
and I have an internal node I defined as a wire. Now, let me describe the components. I have an AND gate here. I name it as G1. I could have named it whatever name I want. Uh, it has, so this is the gate here. It has an output connected to E, which is this one here, and it has an input connected to A and B, which are these two. And then I have a nut and an inverter here where I have an input which is connected to node C, right? And an output connected to node Y, which is right here. Then in an OR gate, which is this one here, I happen to name it as G3, right? And it has uh, uh, input connected to E and Y, E and Y, okay, so this is Y here. And the output is connected to A, A to X, which is the output here. Module and module, this is how I describe the circuit in a structural fashion, okay? So this is gate instantiation. Now, how I can do the same circuit, but I have to, I will do, I will, I will use data flow. Typically, data flow will use a sign statement, and we will talk about it in the not next lecture, the lecture after. A sign statement, okay, uh, typically assign values to wires or outputs. So now I'm assigning the value of X, okay, to be what? A ended with B, E ended with B, or not C, or not C, which is E. We'll, we'll talk about the operations, those in the coming lecture, okay? Now, um, <clears throat> okay, and then Y equal the inversion of C. Y equal the inversion of C. Now, Okay, so this is what type of uh, uh, modeling data flow. Now I can have a third type, which is the procedural uh, uh, behavior procedural, and which I use always uh, notation. This always block notation. Okay, and basically not not the assign the always. Okay, always at, and then we describe the equation. Okay, so these are the three. Right, so if we go back here, this is this is instantiation of gates, the structural, the behavioral procedural using the assign statement, and the behavioral. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The behavioral data flow is using the assign statement. The behavioral procedural is using always block. Okay. All right. Now, when we do logic simulations, we generate waveforms. Right, like so here, and those waveforms show me the the circuit, and we will use model sim simulator as I have downloaded the uh, binary of the simulator for you in under the files for you to to install. Okay, so now this is uh, this concludes my first lecture. Okay, so I'm going to um, uh, here. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>